Welcome back to the 2017 BYU Football Media Day go. Web Chats. I'm your host, Lauren Frankham, and we're here with Robbie Bosco, who is the quarterback for the National Championship 84 team, and Chad Lewis, who is the starting tight end for the Cotton Bowl team. This is incredible to have you two together. It's fun to have Media Day. This is good. Yeah, do you actually like Media Day? Because you get, oh, I get big mixed time. reviews. You know, like some people like to come, some people Since we're independent, we, we do it before the rest of the country. We do it when it works for us, and we get capture the audience for a while. This is, this is really fun to see coaches, players come back. Very cool. Plus, football's right around the corner. Right. So the excitement is, we're starting to feel it right now. It's yeah. true. People are a little more willing to do interviews and stuff yeah, like that because yeah, they're excited right. for the season. That's right. So you guys get to honor Lavelle Edwards a little bit later. They're doing Lavelle's coaching tree. That's right. So, Robbie, you played for Lavelle, obviously, coach for Lavelle. What do you feel like is one of the biggest things that he taught you that sticks with you still today? The biggest thing is not even football related. It's how he treated people. And... You know, there's, there's very few of us that were able to play for him and coach with him. And I saw him the same way in both, both coaching and playing for him. He treated people with kindness. Um, it didn't matter if we won or lost. And so that's kind of what I took from him. And it's kind of stayed with me forever now. Chad, what about you? All people, same exact thing. When we, when we, when we think about Lavelle, when we talk about him, it's how he treated us as people first. He was a motivator, he loved us, he inspired us, he made us feel like all of our sacrifices were worth it, that all of our hard work was just, he just appreciated it to his core. He was, he was so unique that way in that we, as his players, we never wanted to let him down because he loved the heck out of us. And it just made us want to run through a wall for him. Yeah. You mentioned before there are a ton of incredible coaches that coached under Lavelle and players, one being Andy Reid. Yeah, right here. Was, yeah, yeah. Was he a... doesn't like him at all, <laughs> as you can you tell. Know, I think about Holmgren and Andy Reid. Uh, Andy was my coach. I'm moving right now, so this was in a box. I brought it down. <laughs> but Andy, um, probably more than anyone I know, has has taken Lavelle's imprint on his his whole person as a coach and as a person. And that's how he was as our coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's now with the Kansas City Chiefs, turning that place around. But here's an example of Andy being like Lavelle. Andy will text his players probably 50 times a night. Did you hear me? 50 times a <laughs> night. He's not a millennial, but he knows how to use his phones. He's, and he does that for this reason. He wants his players to know that he cares about them. Like, hey, what are you up to? What's going on? And he stays so that in that kind of text. I was wondering if they was getting mad or something. No, 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 no. Were no. <laughs> it's like, hey, what's going on? How can I help? What's, what's the heartbeat of the team? He keeps his finger on the pulse of the heartbeat of the team in a unique way that it's similar to the way Lavelle did. Some people thought Lavelle was just standing there, not engaged. But Lavelle absolutely knew the feeling of the team, and it's it's a real delicate feeling. And Andy has that same gift. He knows. And that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in college or the NFL or anywhere, so it's very unique. But Andy's been very successful in what he's done, and you can see that people like playing for him. Robbie, you've been around the program a long time now, so one of the reasons for Media Day is to be introduced to this 2017 team. What do you feel like from what you've seen so far is going to make these guys have a successful season? Well, first of all, it's the head coach. And the things that we've talked about with Lavelle, Kalani is the same way. He replicates his style of coaching and, and gives credit to Lavelle with everything he knows. And kids love playing for Kalani. And so that's going to be the biggest motivator and the biggest reason for our success is because of the way Kalani has his assistant coaches coaching and everybody loves to play for him. So we're excited for this year. We're excited to see what happens and, and how we perform on the field. And it's going to be a fun year. Can I say one thing yeah, about please. Kalani? Just dovetail what Robbie said. You will not hear Kalani talk about his team without him saying how much he loves his players. And he'll do it through stories. He'll do it through personal references. But watch that. Watch for the next year. When Kalani talks about his team, the love he has for those guys, it just comes out. That's, that's Lavelle. That's, that's Lavelle's tree. I mean, that's what he shared more than football with the guys that he coached with. That's definitely something I've noticed about Kalani is he does not like 
when you talk about him. He always yeah, will know. take it back to the players. That's right. As the media, which is which is an, an awesome thing. He just is a humble guy. I I would want I want to play for him. Yeah, I don't yes. know position. They got pads for you. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So you're you're a good inspirational speaker, Chad. If you had to give some advice to this year's team, what would it be? I would say take the love and determination you have from your head coach take it through the practices of training camp into the practices during the week and when you take the field then that's where it all matters like your love for your coach that's where you prove it you run through a brick wall not just through practice and talking about the game we're talking about practice <laughs> on the field when the fans are watching that's when you show your love for your head coach. When times are really hard, and at the end of the game when you're really tired, that's when you suck it up for the guy over there that you know is just fighting battles for you. Yeah. And so I would tell the team this year, you show it on the field, on game day, when you're really tired, how much you love that dude. I love that. We're gonna clip that off and send it to him. What would you say, Robbie? <laughs> It's the same thing. I mean, football is a rough sport. It's a hard sport, and it's tough. Uh, you have a lot of ups and downs. You have injuries and things like that. So you just got to battle through it and play as a team. The, the worst thing a team can do is separate themselves from each other. And one of the things of being a head coach, or which Kalani will do and does a great job of, is keeping that team together. And Kalani's the, the straw that stirs that drink, and he's just got to keep it moving in the right direction. And if everyone has that feeling, that same attitude, and is cheering on, whether you're on the bench or not, cheering on everybody, you're gonna find success. And I can see this with this team. I really like that. We're gonna take a little of a turn. So I hear you're a pretty good golfer, which I know you were the, Let me the just coach read, for the He's a very team. good golfer. Very good golfer, because you won the, the tournament last weekend, right? We did. With the University of Utah coaches, you and Brian Santiago and two guys that I did. Yeah. So who, who is the best golfer on the staff, on the athletic staff? Robbie. Is it Robbie? <laughs> no question about it. I'll let Chad answer. He doesn't have to speak for himself. <laughs> Robbie is he's a great golfer because so he, humble. Oh, he, he loves Chad. the game. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a great swing. Um, he, he knows the game. He loves the game. He appreciates the game, and he respects the game. And so it's fun for all of us in the department to play with him to, because of Good golfers are hopefully contagious. We're waiting for it to <laughs> like elevate infect the, us. The level of everybody. <laughs> He's a great golfer. Awesome. Well, there's no better way to end an interview than on golf, right? That's the best way to do it. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for being here yeah. with us. Coming up next, we have Steve Capusi and Gennaro Guilford, so don't go away.